this video, we're going to be showing you how to remove your C9, C7, or 3126 front main seal and replace it with a new one. Okay, so here's basically the tools you'll need. You'll need an installer. You will need a new front seal. You'll need a little Brillo pad a heel bar, a some sort of large half inch breaker bar or impact wrench, torque wrench, and a 21 millimeter socket. And here's the installer. The part number on it is a 1U7430. And that's a cat part number, and that's the installer you should need. And of course you'll need a new seal. This part number is for a C9 version. So, we have our engine here. You will need to remove the serpentine belt if you're going to be changing it. And there are the outer bolts and the inner bolts. You only need to remove the inner bolts because that's what holds the dampener onto the crankshaft. So what you're going to do is zip them off. It's easy if you have an impact, although if it's in chassis it's going to be a lot more difficult. And these are 14 millimeter bolts with a 21 millimeter head. And they are all kind of go through a single large washer. So when you get them off, I'll show you how it's kind of set up here. So we have the bolts removed, just like that. Hang on to those bolts and the large washer. And those are 14 millimeters, as I stated before. That'll be important later. And that's all that holds your dampener on. Now, a cat calls it a damper, not a dampener. Um, I usually call it a dampener. But, cat calls it a damper. So there's your damper. And you're gonna wanna clean the sealing area of it with your Brillo pad. You can also use a wire wheel if you have that. And that'll actually clean a lot faster. But if you don't, Brillo pad works. You just wanna get the ridge off, any um, grime, dirt off of there. And if it's cut in an oil, clean it as well. Here's after I cleaned it. Now I used a wire wheel. It does it a lot faster and does a good job. So now the seal is left inside the front structure. You'll use your heel bar and it should pop right out. Just get it underneath and pry away, just like that. Now if you ever remove one of these seals like this, you cannot reuse it. The seal's been destroyed. So there's your seal. And that's about it to get the seal out. Now you can see this one had been painted quite a bit that's why I'm changing the seal and you'll want to clean up the sealing area and while we're doing this I wanted to say thank you to John for a $10 donation at a dip date at yahoo.com on PayPal so clean up the sealing area there and if there was any paint on the crank like this one has you'd want to clean that as well but yours probably won't have paint on it because you probably don't have a new engine then spray it down with I'm using brake clean it's a uh, fast drying cleaner. And here's your new seal. So you can see the part number there. It also has a shaft and rotation. Remember, on, this is a counterclockwise engine, as almost all engines are. But you're looking from the front, so it's showing clockwise rotation. And it also says install dry. We're not gonna use any sort of sealant or anything on this. So we have our installer and the new main seal. You will want to keep that plastic ring inside the seal during the installation process. So what you're going to do is you're going to set your seal in there lightly with your installer. And the installer should have this set up with two bolts. You'll want to put oil or molly denim lubricant on the bolt threads. Or else they can gall while installing. You always want to lubricate bolt threads when you're using any sort of installer. It protects the threads. And since the bolts, you're using two bolts, you're going to want to work them back and forth. You don't want to hammer one all the way in and then not hammer the other one in. So you can do this by hand as well. I'm doing it to speed it up for an impact. So you go back and forth um, slowly. Like I said before, you're not going all the way in and then all the way out with one bolt. You're just going back and forth so it seats evenly. So we are installing our new main seal. And you notice I didn't put any sort of retaining compound or anything on that seal. That's what it means by install dry. You just use the dry sealant that's already 
on the seal. So when the installer stops, you are done. It will seat, and then it's the new seal's installed. So you need to just remove your installer now. And there'll be like a little film left by the dry sealant that was on the seal. And then that plastic ring. Now, if you're not going to be putting your dampener on for a while, leave the ring in. Because the ring helps keep the, the lip seal in its proper location. And it will keep it from uh, distorting. So we're going to put the dampener in. So we remove our little plastic ring here. And you don't need it for anything, so you can throw it away. Make sure there are no debris, paint, flakes, anything in the seal area. And then you're going to take your damper. This one is very clean, as you can see. And you want to clean the inside ring as well because it seats against the crankshaft. Make sure there's nothing or debris on that. That is clean. We're going to slide it in. Now, CAT's dampers do not have a keyway or anything like most automotive engines do. So there's no up or down or advanced or anything on this damper. You just slide it in and then you install the hold down bolts. Now these hold down bolts do not need to have any sort of Loctite or anything on them. Uh, they're just gonna be installed clean and dry and they're gonna be torqued. I torque these bolts, they're critical. I mean, if your dampener comes off, damper, um, you know, that could cause quite a bit of damage, especially if it's, uh, you know, next to a radiator, which these usually are. Um, you know, I always make sure I torque these bolts. Now, you'll notice I'm using an impact here. I'm not hammering on them, I'm just seating them. So you zip them down. Now, if you're going by the install specifications on SIS, it will not tell you the torque for installing these hold down bolts. A 14 millimeter bolt torque is 120, but if you go into specifications, it'll actually tell you to torque these to 150 foot pounds. So we're going to torque it. Now, the problem with torquing this on the crankshaft is the dampener can move while you're torquing. So if you try to hold the damper and torque it, you can usually do that without having to pin the engine or anything. So I always go crisscross uh, back and forth, just make sure they've seated properly. And I usually do it more than once just to make sure they're not gonna fall off. So we've done pretty much all of them more than once now. They have held their torque, they're not tightening anymore. So you are all done.